Let's hop to Sunday now. We'll talk. 10 a.m. kickoff. Arsenal minus 550 at home. Hosting red hot Nottingham Forest. Just off that that brilliant win at the city ground against Liverpool. Uh, Forest 14 to 1 on the money line. The draw is plus 3. Uh, excuse me. The draw is plus 650. Uh, you know, I, I was telling you guys before the season started that the Steve Cooper guy, <laughs> hell of a manager. Uh, I think I'm starting to get rewarded for that. He's starting to get rewarded. The team's starting to get rewarded. Uh, I, they can give Arsenal maybe some trouble here, but I don't think uh, I'll be interested here in the back-to-back magic. So I'll be passing, uh, but you two are both on the same bet. BJ, I'll let you go first. Yeah, I like 103 goals, a plus 115. I think the total is a tad inflated here. I think it has a lot of, to do with the fact that on paper, Nottingham Forest's defense is, is really, really bad. You know, they've allowed 23 goals this season. You know, it is off 19 expected, but you've seen it. And this is kind of how regression works and, and why we talk about regression so much is that Nottingham Forest has gotten quite lucky defensively over their last few matches. They obviously allowed over two expected goals to Brighton, over two expected goals to Liverpool, and uh, they end up not conceding. So... Um, you now you come into this match against Arsenal. Now there is some, you know, worrying signs for Arsenal that maybe they're not, uh, the best team in the premier league. Um, I'm not ready to, you know, say the, tell everybody about those, but with that, being said, you know, they, they've, they've only, you know, they created only 0.7 against Leeds, only 0.8 against Southampton. And the, the biggest thing for me in this match is that, and Arteta did this against Leeds and he did it against Southampton is that, from time to time, Arsenal, when they when they go ahead, they get incredibly conservative and they basically just sit back and they allow their opponent to essentially control the ball and let them do whatever they want. Um, you saw it against Leeds in the second half, and then you know Southampton was able to get back into the match against Arsenal. Um, so for a match like this, where if Arsenal goes up early, I mean, we could see them, you know, just basically put on the handbrake here and, and you know, try not to allow anybody's anybody uh, not allow Nottingham Forest to score. I mean, Arsenal from an even game state are playing with a lead. They're allowing under one expected goal for you know per 90 minutes. They're the second best defense in the Premier League, only behind City. You know, they're number one in progressive passes and dribbles allowed. They've only allowed five big scoring chances on the season. So I have uh I have concerns of how Nottingham Forest is actually going to get at this Arsenal defense because they are incredibly reliant on big scoring chances. Like they're not taking a high number of shots. Um, So I don't think we're going to see the offensive uh, just explosion like we saw against Liverpool where they created five big scoring or four big scoring chances and over two expected goals. And I think we just have honestly just a total that's a a tad inflated for a really good Arsenal team and an Arsenal offense that has been running a little hot, I'll say. Um, uh, and I, you know, I only have two point eight goals projected, so under three goals at plus one fifteen is good enough for me. It's time to have the conversation, BJ. No, it's not. No, it's not. Gabriel Jesus. He's fine. Six point one expected goal. Pretty good. Yeah. Five goals. He's doing it again. Yeah, he'll be fine. Don't. And worry. Arsenal is running six goals above their expected numbers as a team, despite the guy who takes the most shots not being good at finishing. And you mentioned it. It wasn't just that. They went to Bodo Glimt, created under one expected goal. I know that they rotated the team for that, but when you look across the board, there are signs that, okay, Arsenal played an incredible eight or so matches. They deserve to be top of the table based on those performances. But they were so much better than they were last year that the reality of the team is probably in the middle. And I think that's where we're coming down to now, where do I expect Arsenal to put up under one expected goal at home against Nottingham Forest? No, but I do think the total is inflated. I agree with BJ on that. The scary thing is, is that most of these flatter offensive attacking performances have come on the road. They have been still excellent at home. But again, I still think this is more a matter of Arsenal is just not going to click at the level that it did in those first eight matches because they are going to regress from that high. And they're still going to be a top, comfortably top four team. I'm feeling very good about my, my Arsenal top four tickets. But I do think that this is a bad spot for them. Uh, and I, they have to go to Eindhoven uh, on Thursday too. So again, a bad rest spot. Give me the under three plus money. Yeah, Arsenal's only allowed 4.4 expected goals in five home matches. So it's... Yeah, they're it, dominant defensively. They're, they've like, been Forrest dominant has no path to goals here. And Arsenal's only scored over three goals once, and it was against Leicester. So, like, I mean, obviously, we like like to talk about XG. They haven't created over three XG against anybody. 
Um, so if you truly believe that Nottingham Forest is not even going to threaten Arsenal's goal, I mean, under three at, at even money or at, you know, plus number is, is a pretty decent price. And they've been resilient defensively. I mean, they should have yeah. conceded multiple to Brighton. Like I mean, said, it's going to be Arsenal's going to get off a ton of shots. You know, Forrest is going to play a low block and, you know. Yeah, I think it'll be a 2 nil. but I'm not, I like, I like the under three plus money. I think it's too yeah. high. I, I make it a little I under three, actually. 